Hello and welcome to cost management. This set of videos will start off with a recap of prerequisite knowledge as this cost management course is an intermediate uh, to senior level university course, undergraduate course, as well as is cross-listed with a graduate level course. These slides, these mini lecture videos that end with at least one MCQ are not the only part of this course. They are meant to really act as a base level foundation. They do not replace getting familiar with the textbook. They do not replace uh, going to the tutorials, uh, but rather they are the foundation. So let me show you how this course was designed and developed. On your left-hand side, you'll see this course, Cost Management, and on the right-hand side, you will see CPA, so Chartered Professional Accountants of Canada in this instance, because we are located in Canada, although this course may be applicable to regions outside of Canada, as cost management tends to be pretty universal. PEP stands for the Professional Education Program, and this is preparation for it. So rather than learning the materials in university one way, and then having to relearn them another way. Um, here I've just built out how this progression in this course will lead to content mastery for your present course, while also paralleling these, you know, this getting ready for CPA preparation so that you don't need to relearn it a different way should you choose. Not always, not every student will choose to, and that's absolutely okay, uh, but should you choose to go on to graduate level learning such as the CPA program. So these uh, mini videos, mini lecture videos, will act as the first block. Each chunk of topics, so for example, this one is a prerequisite knowledge, you will also have um, uh, you know, three to five mini lecture videos for each chapter. Again, core instructional. You'll also have tutorials, which are separate videos, which walk you through uh, tutorial questions, which directly reflect the assignments. So the assignments, you will have as many chances to complete them as you'd like. And again, this is now going from a base level foundation, then application in the tutorials to now you are applying it. Um, and then you will do your assignment wrap ups as a part to reflect, debrief, you know, really cement and solidify what you're doing well, as well as what you need to work on so that when you prepare for the term tests, you can fill in those gaps. And here you'll be demonstrating your knowledge on the most important concepts, the core concepts, and then we will do that for part one of the course, and then we will do that again for part two. Okay, so that is a little bit on how this course is designed and developed. Let's start in this first video for recapping prerequisite knowledge. This is topic one, the nature of costing. So it's really important that from your prerequisite knowledge, you are familiar uh, with all of these terms direct materials, otherwise known as DM, direct labor, DL, manufacturing overhead, MOH. The direct materials are materials easily traced to a product. So for example, wood used in a chessboard. Direct labor is labor that can easily be traced to a product. So for example, time spent by a carpenter to make the chessboard. And lastly, for these product costs, manufacturing overhead. All costs of manufacturing other than the direct material or direct labor. So my favorite example here is the glue. So you have glue um, that you could use for many different chess boards and it might not easily be able to be traced to any particular chess board in particular. So if it's not easily traceable, then it's manufacturing overhead. Uh, that can also be the electricity on the plant floor. You know, how much electricity went into this one, uh, one chessboard? I don't know. Um, so you throw in the bucket of manufacturing overhead and then we, we will apply it to our products uh, later on and we will discuss that more in a subsequent chapter. But for now, I just want to get kind of familiar or re-familiar with these product cost terms. We also have period costs. So if it's not a product cost, it'll be a period cost. But let's delve into what a period cost is a little bit more. Period cost can be broken down to marketing or selling costs. 
These are costs such as advertising and sales commissions. Administrative costs are costs associated with the general company management, uh, such as executive assistants, such as salaries of senior managers. So anything that is not you know, directly tied to a product is a period cost. Now, many of us in accounting, we get really hung up on definitions because we like to be accurate and correct. Good. You'll notice the frustration here comes with easily tied to, because yes, you can make an argument um, as for that professional judgment piece of easily in a number of different ways. So when going through each one of these subsequent MCQ questions and when going through the tutorials and practicing your assignments uh, for your term test, just think to yourself, if you get something wrong, why? And um, if you need to clear it up, shoot me an email, happy to talk about it. And that's just really, really, you know, developing your professional judgment and seeing what this easily traceable comes to be. Okay, let's continue on. Costs are being referred to as, you know, fixed or variable. Our variable costs are costs that vary with the direct number of products produced. Fixed costs, however, do not vary with the number of units produced, uh, and we say that within a relevant range. So let me provide you an example. Variable costs could be something such as the uh, direct materials that go into a tube of lipstick. So the more tubes of lipstick you decide to um, to manufacture, to create, the more that you end up selling, uh, the more um, costs that you would incur for each tube of lipstick. However, fixed costs may be that you have an agreement with a distributor um, that they would sell or distribute, pardon me, um, your first 100,000 tubes of lipstick for uh, $20,000. So then anywhere, if you um, they were distribute um, 20,000 tubes of lipstick, anywhere from zero to 100,000 tubes, that would cost you a flat fee of 20,000. You want to distribute 1,000 at 100,001. Well, then we're going to outside of the relevant range and we'd have to see what the costs are there. Now, mixed costs are costs that behave partially as fixed costs and partially as variable costs. So they may be something like, um, you know, your lipstick distributor would sell um, your lipstick. They might come back and if you're like, mm, 20,000 is too high, they might say, like, okay, well, you're not sure you're going to sell all the 100,000. How about this? How about we sell, the, we enter into this distribution agreement at $5,000 flat plus a dollar for every lipstick that you want to distribute or 20 cents or something that makes sense to you. So we can have variable costs, costs that vary directly with number of units produced, fixed costs, they don't vary within that relevant range, or mixed costs, a little bit of both. So I find it helpful whenever I'm going through material, and as silly as this may sound, but I like to think about it in types of costs that are in my life. So when I think about this, I think about um, group fitness classes. So for example, if I were to enter into, um, I look at my yoga studio and I pay a set amount of a cost, I believe it's $60 uh, each month, for uh, unlimited yoga. And if I go one time, it's $60. If I go 20 times, it's $60. If I go no times, it's $60. However, um, Pilates is uh, about $20 per class. So if I go one time, it's 20, two times, it's 40, zero times, it's zero. Uh, you may see things uh, such as mixed costs. And hmm, I might see this as... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mom. My mom um, loves to get her nails done. So whenever I'm visiting her, she uh, will go get a pedicure or mani-pedi. And so the fixed cost might be something like, okay, you walk in and it's going to be $40 for pedicure. 
But then a variable cost might be like for every stencil that you want to put on or every like little drawing, it might be an extra five or ten dollars. So there you have the pedicure for forty dollars, plus you get two stencil things um, for five dollars each, and all of a sudden you're at a fifty dollar mani pedi. Again, these things do not need to be uh, sophisticated. We also don't need to talk about widgets all the freaking time. Um, make this meaningful to you, and honestly, you will see that these fixed costs, these variable costs, these cost costs are everywhere and you might actually end up finding them helpful uh, and I really hope that you do and meaningful in your own life as well as your professional life. Okay so we're almost to our first question but first I want to talk about direct versus indirect costs. So direct costs are easily traceable to a particular cost object whereas indirect costs are not easily traced to a particular cost object. So think about something like this. Um, and please note that a product, um, a cost object doesn't necessarily need to be a product. It can be, but it can also be something like a sales division, an office, um, or something like that. So depending on the company, you may want to spend more time and resources tracing your costs. Um, so if I think back to the yoga studio, <laughs> okay, say we have um, a session, the yoga studio it has mirrors, it has floors, uh, they need to be cleaned after every, after every yoga studio session, after every class, and you could see the direct materials as, <laughs> um, oh goodness, uh, as, I don't know, have they handed out like a free, a free product uh, to every time you enter a class, so a free headband. And those would be your direct materials. And then your direct labor would be for your cost instructor, assuming they're on a variable like contract. Um, and then you might have your cleaning solution. And really, it just comes down to how, how closely do you want to track these costs? So I would say that these are indirect costs. You buy $50 worth of cleaning solutions. It lasts you one week. You have you know five classes a day. So five times seven is 35, um, $50 divided by 35 classes. And you have your kind of what we will talk about later as being kind of a, a partially um, application of those um, overhead costs. So it's not easily traceable because um, if I wanted to trace how much of that cleaning solution went into every class, I would be asking, okay, how much of this, uh, how much of these bottles did you put into the bucket to wash the floors? How many spray things um, did you use on the mirrors when you were cleaning them? Did you use anything else on your mirrors, your paper towels? How are you cleaning this? So goodness, it just comes down to, um, when we say not easily traceable, is the cost worth the benefit? You can account, <laughs> you can account for too much. It is possible to be too accurate because it comes at a cost of time and attention and utilizing those resources elsewhere, otherwise known as opportunity costs, which we will get into in a subsequent slide. All right, now it's your turn. We've thrown a lot of cost terms at you. A question for you. A manager at your company approaches you and tells you that they are having difficulty assigning some costs. The first are wheels to be used to assemble skateboards for sale. And the second is the utility costs for lights that are on the ceiling of the head office for the manufacturing facility. These costs respectively are A, period cost and product cost. B, product cost or period cost. C, variable cost and variable cost. Or D, sunk cost and opportunity cost. I'm not going to repeat this every video, but how this will work is I'll ask you or I'll imply to pause the video after I'm done reading the question and I'll kind of give it like 1001, 1002. I'm expecting for you, if you don't have an answer readily available, um, you can pause the video and then you can press play when you're ready to find out the answer and we'll do a quick debrief. All right. So the answer is B. The skateboard wheels are easily traced to a product being produced, that is, materials for the skateboard, and is a product cost. Product cost. Because lights are not easily traceable to a particular product, and in fact, it has to do with the ceiling of the head office, which oversees the manufacturing facility, those are going to be referred to as 
period costs. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next.